Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Anshu. Today I am working at SD5 at Adobe and today I present the 10th of February lead code challenge. The problem that we have in today is as far from land as possible. The question says you are given a grid of size n cross n wherein the cell of a grid could be either land or water. What do you need to do? You need to identify the maximum distance that exists between a water cell and its nearest land cell. So this is what we need to return. And in case no land and water exist in the grid, what do you need to do? You need to return minus one in those cases. So here they have provided us with an example. As you can see, the distance of this particular water cell from the nearest land cell happens to be two unit. And one way is to go through this direction. Other way is to go through this direction. Third one is to this direction. And fourth one is through this direction. So in all the four cases, the distance remains as it is, which is two unit. And the question says you need to identify the Manhattan distance and they have provided a formula for it. So I'll be talking about the algorithm by the presentation that I usually do. And guys, if you are following coding decoded, then you, you will yourself feel that this is an easy level question. If you have already solved the question cocoa eating bananas, which I have already talked about like two years back, then this question would be a cakewalk for you. Problem. I have taken a slightly different and easy example so that you guys get a good hold of the concept. The algorithm that we are going to use to solve all such questions of this particular type is nothing but BFS reversal. As I talked, go and visit cocoa eating bananas or rotten oranges and this question would be a cakewalk for you. The same, form, uh, the same concept applies over here as well. So let's start the iteration. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a BFS queue and we'll be doing the level order traversal. From where we'll be starting this traversal, we'll be looking out for all land cells that exist in this entire grid. We'll not look out for the water cells. So we will go in the reverse thought process. We'll find out the distance of each land cell to the nearby water cell instead of looking from the water cell to the nearby land cell. This is the catch of the question. If you have cracked this, then you have cracked the entire question. So we are seeing the land cell over here. So let's write the row coordinate and the column coordinates. What do we see? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here as well, 0, 1, 2, 3. The first land cell that we have is at 0, 0. So 0, 0 gets added over onto the queue. And the next land, so we'll iterate over the entire grid and we'll look out for the land cells. The next land cell is at 2, 3. So 2, 3 gets added over here. Now we will start the BFS iteration and we will mark these cell as visited because these are already land cells. So we will not be revisiting these cells ever. Let's pull the topmost element of the BFS queue and what is extracted? 0, 0 is extracted. What are we going to do? We'll look out for its neighbors. There are four neighbors of this particular cell. First one is this one, second one is this one and the other two are out of boundaries. So we'll not do anything for them. What do we see? We see here that this is water. Since it is water, we will be updating the nearest distance from this land cell to this water cell. And what that distance value would be? It would be nothing but the level of reversal that we are doing in this BFS queue. What level are we at? So this was the 0th level and this is the first level. So let's write the level value over here. This will denote the distance of this cell from the near the, from the corresponding land cell. So one gets updated over here and one also gets updated over here. Since these two were water cells, what we'll be doing, we'll be adding these cells into the BFS queue again for, for future operations. So let's add 0, 1 onto this queue and 1, 0 onto this queue. The level of BFS iteration that is happening right now is for 1. Let's proceed ahead. Let's delete this element and the next one that we have is 2 comma 3. Let's look out for all the four neighboring elements of 2 comma 3 cell. The first one is this one, second one is this one, third one is this one, fourth one is this one. So what is the distance between this particular cell and this particular cell? It is nothing but the level of traversal of BFS that we are currently doing. The level of traversal of for the BFS is of one unit. So let's go ahead and update the distances over here as 1, 1, 1, 1. All of these have been updated to 1, 1, 1, 1. And along with this, we'll be adding these elements into the BFS queue. So 1, comma 3 gets added. 1, comma 3 gets added. Next, we'll have 2, comma 4. 
so 2 comma 4 gets added next we'll have 2 comma 2 gets added next we will have 3 comma 3 gets added with this we have successfully completed the level 1 iteration of our BFS queue moving ahead we'll simply delete 2 comma 3 from our BFS queue this is already gone and now we will look out for the remaining elements present in our BFS corresponding to level 1 also, when we have added these elements into the BFS queue, don't forget we'll mark those as visited so that we don't revisit those cells ever in future again. Uh, the element that we have happens to be 0, 1. So this element is pulled out and we will look out for its neighbors. The first one is this one, second one is this one and third one is this one. Since this is already a lands and land has been visited in the past, so we'll ignore this up and skip it up. The area of interest lies over here in these two cells. So what do we see? We see them as water cells that means we'll have to update the distance for this particular cell to the nearest land cell what would be the nearest land cell this one is the nearest land cell and how do you identify the distance between these two cells it would be nothing but the distance of this cell plus one so what is the distance of this cell it is one unit plus one gives you two so let's update it to two similarly let's update it to two whatever you are seeing in purple pen corresponds to level 2 of the BFS traversal. So these two gets added into the BFS queue. We have 0, 2 added into the BFS queue. And here we will add 1, 1 corresponding to this particular cell. This element is gone and now let's do the same thing for the remaining elements. We'll have 1, 0 out of the BFS queue and this is extracted. We'll look out for its neighbors. First one is this one, second one is this one. This is already visited the value has been updated to 2, we'll skip it up and we have 0 over here that means a water cell, we'll update the distance as 2 and let's add this cell back into the BFS queue to queue so 2 comma 0 gets added into the queue let's proceed further this element is gone and the next element that we have happens to be 1 comma 3 where is 1 comma 3? 1 comma 3 is here and let's look out for its neighboring cells we have one, one neighbor as this one, second neighbor as this one, third neighbor as this one, fourth neighbor as this one. This is a land cell, we'll skip it up. The, the remaining cells become the area of interest and we will update it distance to 2, 2, 2 and we will add those into the BFS queue. And let's get these added. 0, 3 gets added. Next we will have 1, 2, 1, 2 gets added. Next we will have 1, 4 gets added. Now let's continue the iteration. Uh, this element is gone and next we have 2 comma 4. So where is 2, where is 4? This one, this is the cell. So we'll extract this up and we'll look out for its neighbors. Uh, one is this one, second one is this one and third one is this one. This is already visited, we'll skip it up. This is a land cell and this is a water cell. So the area of interest lies only here because the rest of the cells are either visited in the past or land cells. What we are gonna do, we'll simply update the distance from 0 to 2. The identifier for this particular is 3, 4. So 3, 4 gets added into the BFS queue. Let's continue the iteration. And the next element that we have is 2, 2. So uh, where is 2, 2? 2, 2 is somewhere here. Let's extract this element up and let's see its neighbors. One is this one, second one is this one, third one is this one, and fourth one is this one. These two are already visited in the past, so we'll skip it up. These two become the area of interest and we'll update the distance to 2 comma 2. These two gets added into the queue. So we'll have 1 comma 2 comma 1, 2 comma 1 added into the queue. So 2 comma 1 gets added and here we'll have uh, the value updated to 2. The identifier is 3 comma 2. So 3 comma 2 also gets added into the queue. Let's continue the iteration. The last cell corresponding to level 1 happens to be 3 comma 3. So where is 3? 3 is here, 3 comma 3 is this one. And as you can see, all its neighbors have been visited. This is visited, this is visited, this is visited. So we'll simply skip it up. So this element is gone. Now what we're gonna do, we'll continue the uh, iteration and the next element that we have into the BFS queue happens to be 0 comma 2 and the level corresponding to this traversal turns out to be 3. So this element is extracted, 0 comma 2 is extracted, uh, which is this one. It doesn't have any neighbor which is not visited and is a water cell. We'll simply skip it up. So this is gone. Next we'll have 1 comma 1. 1 comma 1, where is 1 comma 1? Here is 1 comma 1. 
we'll simply skip it up because there is no neighbor which is not visited so this is also deleted from the queue next we have 2 comma 0 2 comma 0 we as you can see there are three neighbors 1 2 and 3 this one is not visited and since it's a water cell what we are going to do we'll update the value to 3 so this gets updated to 3 and we make an insertion into the queue you can continue the iteration further and what is the maximum value that has been set as distance in this entire grid the maximum value would turn out to be 3 and this becomes the answer and this is what we need to return so without further ado let's quickly walk through the coding section and conclude the approach i'll simply follow the same steps as i have just talked here here i have created a helper method bfs which has four parameters in it the grid the visited array the number of rows and number of columns that we have moving ahead i have created uh, the bfs queue and along with this i have created a directions 2d array that will help me traverse in all the four directions corresponding to any cell the next variable that i have happens to be the answer that will actually store the result i iterate over the entire grid and what do i do i check what all land cells are there and i add th them those cells into the queue along with this i mark them as visited now let's talk about the bfs traversal that i usually write and it's the same template that i use everywhere while my queue is not empty i extract the style y size minus minus is greater than zero what do i do i extract the current element the topmost element from the queue and i iterate in all the four directions if my new cell has been visited in the past what do i do i simply continue the process otherwise we we mark the current cell as visited we update the grid value and we compare it with the maximum result that we have seen so far along with this we simply add it back into the queue these are the four steps that i did exactly the same in the presentation and once we are done with this while loop we check what value is stored in result if in case it happens to be less than zero we return minus one because it's a negative case otherwise we return result minus one now we will say why result minus one because here i have not actually incorporated the level value in my grid however i took uh, the grid value plus one and the base value in the grid was one that represents the land cell therefore i have to subtract one from the result and let's try and submit this up accepted also if you are interested in solving more such questions then what do you need to do you need to visit coding decoded sd preparation sheet and here you will find all the questions based on the graph concept that could be solved using the bfs traversal so over to you guys more practice will bring will solidify your concept and will give you the confidence to crack any interview question whenever the season of layoffs get over take care goodbye i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question